White Ink, written and read by Jordan Matthews. The woods creaked and moaned, mocking her as her fingers started to slip. Blood formed tiny rivers that pitter-pattered down like crimson tears onto her scrunched-up face. Another nail snapped upwards as splinters bit deep, and twisted branches rose all around, ready to snap her up. She fell. Down and down she tumbled into the belly of the beast. Greens and browns blurred together as air beat her eardrums, and a scream was cruelly ripped from her throat. Eva had already known she was going to die. She had come to that conclusion a while ago, when they had first started to hunt her. But she wasn't ready. Not yet. And she'd wanted to hang on in there just a little while longer. Her small body hit the ground, but instead of the snap of death, she felt alive. A damp pile of twigs and leaves broke her fall, and the demons wherein the skins of men had evaporated into a milky white mist. In their place sat a knight in shining white armour, cleaning a long blade stained with fresh, deep red. Her stick-thin arms shook violently as big gulps of air attacked her. She forced herself up to her feet and quickly brushed her tangled brown hair back. Her green dots for eyes darted around, searching for those that had hunted her, but there was nothing. Nothing but mist and the white night. She could feel little bubbles of vomit forcing their way up her throat on tiny red-hot hooks, but she tried her best to gulp them down. It was only right to thank the one who saved her, and besides, he was a knight, it was clear to see. He couldn't possibly hurt her. She called out, her voice frail and timid. Thank you, sir, for driving off those beasts. He said nothing. Perhaps he could not hear her, she wondered, as she took another step closer. Good sir, she called out, this time with more conviction in her voice. The knight simply stood up and started to walk away, not once paying her any attention. Eva's face scrunched up into a ball. This was not how a knight rescued someone. A knight was supposed to be charming, heroic and brave, and most certainly not rude. She chased after him, but with each step she took, the mist seemed to disappear. The mauled bodies of the men that had hunted her lay broken and in scattered pieces all around her, already being hungrily devoured by the roots and the undergrowth. It had not been clean. With armour and limbs alike wrenched from bodies and bloody gashes replacing eyes, ears and tongues. The glorious night had faded with the mist as well, replaced with a broken down shell. The shell's armour was a dirty white with cracks amongst most of the joints and moved with a cumbersome randomness as if being puppeteered by a blind god. Seaweed and other grime decorated its limbs and water droplets danced on its surface, never resting. Eva froze for a brief second before once again looking over the remains of the ones that would have killed her, or worse. Whatever this broken knight was, he was better than them. She chased after the knight, lightly dodging gnarled roots, pieces of cloth and bodies to catch up with her rescuer. Sir, I must thank you. Please stop and look at me. I would see your face. The knight stopped with a large puff of air. The smell of old fish filled Eva's nose and made her gag. She saw something wet with slime coil through a gap in the knight's gauntlet. The white knight went to take another foot forward, but Eva darted around his side, hopped onto a thick root, and placed her hands on his chest. Sir, I said I wished to... Her voice fled, and she wanted to follow, but her legs wobbled and remained rooted to the spot. The dirty white obelisk towered over her, water swirling over the shell of what once must have been a beautifully crafted set of armour, now chipped and broken. Two dead alien eyes looked down into hers, and a small white tentacle with disgusting grey splodges crept out of a joint between chest and helm to give her a small salute. An invisible hand slipped into Eva's open mouth and down her throat and gripped a scream tight before coming back up. Get away, you freak! She tried to push away, but slipped on the root and fell backwards, cracking her head on something hard beneath her. 
She squirmed away like a desperate bug as the creature clumsily reached out an armoured arm, attempting to help her up. Eva took one more look into those dead eyes searching for life. She vomited onto the extended hand and screamed one more time, Get away, monster, before the world was overtaken by blackness, dot by dot, and she slipped into unconsciousness. By the gods, could you be any slower? called a high-pitched voice. The way you drag yourself along, you'd think you have something to be upset about. The white knight struggled to move his armoured shell as a knight ought to, bumbling down the dusty road, surrounded by dead and dying trees. Sharp points swirled with dying greens and browns into a messy haze as he focused on the road ahead of him. One step after another. A small black bird followed overhead, swooping back and forth cheerfully. You can crawl, you know, sliver around on the ground if that makes you feel better. There's no need for the show, there's no one here but you and me. One step in front of the other. The blackbird swooped down to head level and gently glided alongside the knight. It's not far, just round the next few bends and over a hill. You are okay with hills, yes? A cumbersome arm swung at the bird, but it bopped over the top of it and back down. Okay, okay, you grumpy ass. Now you're going to have to bow like we practiced. The helmet of the knight slowly grated around until it was watching the bird. Hey, you're the one who wanted to be the knight, not me. And knights, bow. The bird didn't lie. He never lied. A shabby old village came into view as they descended a grassy hill full of purple flowers and plenty of wildlife. The village stuck out like a sore thumb with its wooden walls bristled with spikes, an unfriendly sight for sure. It looked as though it was trying to battle away the trees that were ever so slowly attempting to engulf civilization. A small mob had formed outside the gate to which the road led, armed with pitchforks and torches. They were led by a man who looked like a bloated potato with legs. Halt there, ye demon, he spat, showing off a set of chipped, rotting teeth. The white knight halted, and the small blackbird swooped down to perch on his shoulder. We done got your message from this ear bird, Finn. Truth be told, I was surprised ye could write. Luckily for you, my cousin Eric can read. By all the gods, we should chase you and your evil bird off. Bloody Finn was harassing half the town with its presence. We are simple people, and we need simple help. I'm guessing that's why you came. The White Knight said nothing, and for a while an awkward silence crept into the air, but the Potato Man brushed it off with a huff. Well, you better be, or I'll get Garrett here to drive you and your bird away with a club, and he knows how to use it. The White Knight took a step forward, and Garrett, along with the rest of the mob, shuffled backwards, huddling together. For fuck's sake, stand your ground like we practiced, spat the potato man disappointedly, before showing pleading eyes back to the unlikely heroes. Look, there be damned elves in these parts, and not the pretty fins of children's stories, no. These sprites are vicious creatures, more ghost than man. They used to just be an annoyance, pester us and the like. The odd child missing, nothing important. But recently, they've started to attack our farmers. Our poor old farmers. And well, as ye can see, we're a profitable location for such things. He gestured to the blooming fields that dotted the countryside. We make money off it. Good old fashioned hard working monies. And I'll be damned if I let some pointy eared sprites make us relocate. So how about it? A night to drive off the evil monsters? We will pay, of course, once the deed is done. The white knight stood there for a moment, completely still but for the bird on his shoulder which hopped impatiently from foot to foot. Slowly, and with a great groan, the knight bowed. The black bird clicked its beak and there was a whisper. Hunting elves in a damned forest for a bunch of morons. I guess considering we're both dead, we might as well start living like it. Thank ye, sir knight. It shall be a deed of great honour driving back those savages is good for all. I hear just a village over back your way, they found a girl in the woods, dead, her neck snapped. Damned elves are getting aggressive, best to think of them as wild, mindless animals I say, for what kind of sentient creatures would do such a thing? 
The mob dispersed shortly after, now bored of the whole affair, as the Potato Man, whose actual name was Davin, mapped out the surrounding area and his suspected locations of the Elf Menace, all the while keeping a safe few feet away from the White Knight. The bird bobbed its head and muttered to itself while the knight stood still, two dead eyes locked on Davin. He droned on and on, but nonetheless the knight stood, listening and waiting since it was, of course, the honourable thing to do. The pair set out into the woods as the flaming hot penny in the sky beamed down on them, making the air sticky and heavy. The woods themselves seemed cruel and unyielding, taking any opportunity to trip or strike out at the pair, but the white knight couldn't be happier. He had a quest. A low hum resonated from inside the armour, and the blackbird seemed to notice and chirped along. Soon, something else joined the humming. Quiet at first, but getting louder. The pair stopped, and the white knight went for his sword. Movement on his right. He swung his left foot around and planted it forward, drawing his blade. He lifted it high in front of him in one long practice move, ready to strike. There was a long pause. There was no humming, no rustling of foliage, just the wind and the awkward taps of the blackbird. The pair slowly advanced forward, checking every tree, every ditch, but there was nothing. Dark spirits taunt us, Knight. We shouldn't let shadowy fingers pluck the strings of our concentration. We have a quest, squawked the blackbird. The Knight let out a long, damp groan, followed by a hoarse intake of breath. Hey, I can be fancy of my words from time to time, a damn talking bird. I don't exactly have much else going for me, you dumb brute. We can't all play dress up like you. Imagine me in a suit of armour, it would look ridiculous. A small bird sized sword, however. The white knight gave a lazy swing of his hand in response and carried on, struggling more and more in the sweltering heat. The bird seemed to have no problem, falling back into a relaxed hum. A few roots curled and gnarled, tripped the knight several times as they continued, and the air grew as thick as black sludge in his lungs. He let out a snarl at the bird who continued to hum cheerfully. No, I will not stop just because you insist on walking around in that stupid armour. It slows us both down and you're becoming cranky. Besides, my humming is beautiful. I can practically hear the woods singing back. Something was humming back mimicking the tune, but it soon stopped once the pair fell silent. The white knight let out the sound of man drowning in honey while making quick motions with his hands. The black bird nodded along and swooped in a barrel roll before replying, now that sounds like a plan. The pair continued for a while, humming along louder and louder until they came to an opening with a large tree stump dead in the centre. The blackbird floated down onto the stump and cheerfully carried on the tune while the white knight stood motionless on the edge of the clearing, tucked between three fawny trees. A few minutes passed with nothing happening, but something tickled at the edge of the knight's hearing. It grew louder by the second, a light humming from the belly of the woods. He steadied himself and laid a hand on his blade's hilt. Something was wriggling around on the other side of the clearing, darting back and forth, searching. Droplets leaked through the gaps in the knight's armour like an infected wound as the sun's cruel stare continued. Something small pounced towards the stump, and the knight did the same, clumsily fumbling with his blade. It froze. Two tiny paws lay upon the stump, and a small nose was sniffing the blackbird. Two beady dots for eyes gazed at the knight showed no signs of fear, just a curiosity. The creature sniffed a little while longer before sticking out its tongue. It was a scruffy ball of fur with black eyes and grey and white fur dotted around some tiny little paws. The white knight let out a gentle puff of air that made the creature gag. It's a raccoon, I believe. Odd little creatures, they don't normally live around here. Perhaps this one is lost, the blackbird said in reply. The raccoon delicately patted the knight before quickly pulling back its paw, burnt from the heat. It licked its wound before humming calmly and scurrying back to the wood's edge, looking back once more and humming. I think it wants us to follow? The knight slowly shrugged and the pair set off behind the little creature. 
The woods seemed less hostile than before, as if they were bending and scurrying out of the trio's path. The animals hummed, and even the knight seemed to walk with less difficulty, although he still clambered behind. Soon they came to a small pond that glistened underneath a tree of deep purple leaves and bark as red as summer wine. The raccoon gave out a little cry of joy and leapt into the pond, swimming around in a semicircle to look back at the odd pair. The white knight stepped forward and looked down at his reflection and the bird joined him, landing gently on his shoulder. A man tethered to a creature and a creature with the cravings to be a man. We are both bound to our restraints, but just for a second let's take a break. We deserve that, surely. And besides, I can barely stand on you, you're burning so bad. Don't even think of taking off the armour, I've seen that once, I'm not doing it again. The pool seems shallow enough, just slink in or something. The pair slid into the pool, and like a bellowing dragon, great clouds of steam belted out the gaps from the knight's armour. The heavy armour carried him down, the powerful strokes from what was inside let him control himself. The raccoon hooted in joy and swam around, catching tiny purple leaves while rolling onto his back. They relaxed for a few moments in silence, before the bird whispered in the knight's ear, Now this is questing. But we mustn't dawdle. The sun will soon be falling and we must fulfil our quest. It is our role after all. We must move soon. My stomach is empty and by the rumblings below the water, so are you. How about a quick snack before we head off, hmm? The blackbird turned to look at the raccoon happily swimming at the far end of the pool. There was a pause before a slow rumble emerged in response, and something that looked like a white snake swam below the surface towards the raccoon. Yes, just a small snack. The sun was dipping behind the nearby hills by the time the white knight caught his first sight of his prey. Following Davin's poor instructions and with blind luck, the white knight trudged through the woods for the best part of three hours, weaving back and forth on himself, bumping into trees while branches and thorns lashed out at him, till he finally heard the neighing of a horse and the chatter of a language dead to his ears. Do you know anything about killing elves? Didn't think so, whispered the blackbird, who swiftly took off and fluttered around, flapping its wings until it came to a stop, perched on a thin branch high above. The smell of burning tainted the air, followed by a furious shout from behind a clump of trees. The white knight shuffled forward to get a better look. In a small clearing on the edge of the forest that looked out over a field bustling with bright wheat stood two children arguing over a small cooking pot and fire. One was kicking the weak fire while the other tugged at the dirty rags he wore for clothes. They were shouting back and forth but the white knight couldn't understand any of it or even see if they were elves. They looked like regular poor human children to him. He stepped out from behind the tree of a clunk and raised a gauntlet in greeting before they even turned he realised his mistake. A pointy ear emerged from a mess of blonde hair and wiggled slightly at the sound of his heavy step. Mist leaked into the clearing from all angles in a matter of heartbeats as if a dragon had puffed it to life. Heat rose and bubbled from the very earth the white knight stood upon and high above the blackbird gave flight to a shriek of terror. He drew his sword. Swirling vapour poured through the gaps in his armour, and he felt a sensation he had never felt before as he gulped in the mist that clumped and formed in his throat. Is this what drowning was like? A high-pitched whistle made him stutter, and it thundered around his helm, making him want to scream. Enough of this. The White Knight charged forward, swinging his sword in broad arcs towards where he had last seen the two children. His strokes cleaved through the air and nothing more. The whine was getting louder and he lashed out in its direction, putting all his force into his wild blows but finding nothing but air. Exhaustion crept in quickly, gnawing at his strength as time and time again he missed. The clumps in his throat dug in with burning hot nails that scratched furiously as his eyes wept fiery hot tears. There was a commanding shout in a word foreign to him and the mist disappeared as quickly as it had emerged. The two children were holed together underneath a tree, just out of range. One had a small, decorative wooden flute in his hands. The white knight noticed four black eyes looking upon him, terrified. 
It was the two cruel, milky white ones that he should have seen. The softest of sounds whispered to him, and he tried to fling himself forward, but he was too slow. A hard strike from behind sent him floating upwards to a happier place. There was a relief in death, and he could feel himself rise into the heavens to be greeted by a small black bird. Relief was not what the White Knight deserved, and it was not what he got. He came crashing back to life with a guttural gasp of air. He tried to move, but something had him wrapped tight. His eyes bulged and he struggled to focus for a second. A great stag was standing in front of him, tall and thin, with a great set of antlers and horribly cruel white eyes. You're heavy, the stag said. It had a black bird on its shoulder. I've told him a dozen times, the armour slows him down. You should have seen him fumbling over those children, it squalled. The stag turned its head to look at the bird as the white knight's eyes finally focused. It was not a stag at all, but an elf with a crown of antlers engraved with silver runes. He was dressed in dark green riding clothes with a hint of shiny metal hidden below and a flowing cape of autumn leaves that seemed to endlessly cascade like a waterfall off his back. It was rather amusing. Attacking children, however, he peered down once more with a fierce look. Blackbird fluttered down onto the knight's chest and stared back as the knight continued to wriggle. You should see him when he really gets going at none of these smoke tricks. The elf grinned and waved his fingers in a twirl. The runes on his crown glowed a soft blue before fading and a wisp of smoke formed in his hands. Oh! You don't like tricks, little bird. Well, what are you if not a cruel trick? You amuse me, so I've spared you and your friend, but you will have respect and you will listen. An angry gurgling came from the white knight and he tried to stand, pushing up against what he assumed was a tree that he was tied to. The black bird flapped into the air and circled back around and onto his shoulder. He says, don't threaten the bird. The elf laughed. There was no sound of joy in that laugh. He leaned in close to the white knight and tapped his helm before whispering softly. I've seen what's under the armour. I'm not worried. He pulled out a small oily black dagger, making the bird take flight once more. His cold white eyes looked through the knight for a second before he cut the ropes that bound him and he helped him to fully stand up. I have something to show you. He led the way through a small clump of bushes and trees with strange berries and fruits dotted all around, down a hill and to a small camp of tents camouflaged with foliage alongside a river of crystal clear water. I've decided to show you why you are wrong to hunt us. All life should be precious and that includes yours. It would be a shame to end such a mystery as you. The stench of the sea clings to you and the stench of death upon your bird friend. Far from home, you both are. The white knight let out a loud puff of air followed by a wet, throaty hiss in reply. He says you know nothing of his home, sung the bird. The elf laughed and smiled a wicked grin, yet the knight noticed he never sheathed his dagger, the oily surface of which seemed to shimmer and swirl. True, said the elf lightheartedly, but you shall soon know a little about mine. Grubby children darted between tents, laughing at the night, but staying an arm's length away. Their eyes swirly black almonds, full of curiosity. Old elves sat around the camp, fletching arrows, cooking over small crackly fires, and occasionally giving him icy cold looks through milky white eyes, full of contempt. These people were poor. It was obvious for the night to spot. They gave the appearance of superiority, walking heads held high, while the few fighters between them swaggered confidently, although, again, always out of arm's reach, the knight noticed. Elves never cooked, as far as he had heard, but the camp was full of burnt smells and misguided flavours. A deep, sorrowful mood was thick in the air, like a damp, woolly sheet descending on them. The blackbird gave a chirpy laugh before floating over towards the cooking pots and looking inside inquisitively. I've never seen elves cook before, he chirped, taking a sliver of white stringy meat in his beak and gulping it back. As expected, you're not very good at it. 
He dodged a slash from a wooden ladle and floated back over to the knight, settling down on his shoulder. So, tell me, elf, why should my friend here not slaughter you to the last child to complete his task? He's a knight, you see, and knights kill monsters. I'm not used to human customs, but are knights hired by villagers to fight their wars, to kill children? Elf, with the great antlers, turned to look at the white knight. The antlers formed a shadowy crown through which sunlight trickled. I once knew a human, a knight. A bit slow, but pleasant enough company for a human. And he told me how humans worked, and this thing they called honour. A peculiar breed for sure, but fascinating in a way. Fundamentally flawed right down to how they hunt and eat, yet somehow they survive and, like a plague, spread and destroy. The elf's silky smooth voice turned slow and dark, like water transforming into honey. Honour is what you seek, is it not? Look around. You were sent to kill children and weavers, hunters and poets. We are not warriors to kill in battle, except maybe I, and even then, what crime have I committed? Is there honour in killing my people, in driving them out of homes that have been theirs for hundreds of years? We've been forced to adapt to cook and hunt creatures we once called friends because of the lands humans have taken from us. If you want honour, you are hunting the wrong prey. It is humans you should hunt, honourable knight, not us. The White Knight looked around slowly at the gaunt faces and angry eyes that surrounded him. The bird whispered in his ear. A cold chill settled over the camp and all noise died down but for the bird's voice. Now, I know what you want. These elves are pretty rude and a bit stuck up, and as far as I can remember, elves have committed as many crimes against humans as humans have to elves. But these ones don't seem much for it. Maybe we should listen to the pointy-eared princess over there. We go back to the humans and slaughter them down to the last babe, ending the threat to these elves and saving the day. But do those farmers' children deserve that fate? All I know is, humans make great ballads for their heroes, and elves don't. Is that what you want? A ballad? The White Knight, Elf Slayer, the hero of humanity, the tattered soul. The White Knight grunted and shrugged off the bird angrily. He'd always hated that last nickname. He looked at the bird and gurgled lightly like a pot of water coming to the boil. The island elf took a step forward and placed a hand on the knight's shoulder. So, great one, will you drive out those lesser creatures, the filth that rots this land, and restore this place to its natural order? The elf reacted quickly, but the white knight was quicker. An armoured hand shot upwards towards the elf, but that was not where the blow struck. A blotched, milky tentacle burst through a jagged gap in the joining of the arm, catching the elf by surprise and wrapping itself around the fey one's neck like a watery noose. It tightened as the elf tried to break free, using his oily black dagger to desperately hack and slash, but all he could do was add to the dozens of notches on the white knight's armour. The other elves rushed to his defence. Even the children threw themselves forward with reckless courage. Each elf that came was met with a tentacle. Like snakes pouncing from the moors of a titanic shell, they leapt out in all directions from holes in the armour, snapping necks and ripping off limbs as the camp became a smouldering pot of blood drops, screams and a stinging smell of blood mixed with the salty sea. The antler elf was somehow clinging on, blood droplets of his friends and family painted his face as crimson tears and his eyes bulged to the point of bursting. He tried to wriggle free. As a silent scream was lost in his throat, he dropped his dagger. With the last kick, he booted it mid-air and it bolted towards the white knight, burrowing home in a clump of puffy white flesh deep within an open break of the creature's armour. A damp snarl echoed within the armour and the knight's eyes blazed with a fire as they darted around in panic. He caught a glimpse of a black shadow and he knew he was too late. A child with a rusty dagger had darted underneath swinging tentacles and taken advantage of the knight's pain. The child leapt through the air, aiming at an opening at the base of the neck. The white knight had loosened his grasp enough on the antlered elf to hear a croaky laugh of victory as the boy struck home. 
but the blade never arrived. The blackbird came in like an arrow launched from a bow and leading with its beak plunged into the child's left eye. The black bird was still nibbling on the black jelly as the white knight lifted the child by the foot and once again strengthened his grip on the antlered elf. He killed the boy first by ripping him in two, using four tentacles in a shower of bloody chunks that pitter pattered over the camp. The white knight looked into the dying eyes of the last elf. The antler crown fell from its head as it gave up, struggling and the black bird landed on the knight's shoulder to watch. The stink of fish and blood doubled as a painful gurgle came from the knight, and he seemed to almost vomit up some utterance with a great gasp of air between each painful word. Who's the inferior species now? He popped the elf's neck. So, you talk the common tongue now? That's new said the blackbird, who was trailing the white knight, now so covered in blood he was closer to a red knight at a safe distance. The knight had lost his sword in the fighting and it could not be found amongst the devastation, but together they had ensured all were dead and left for the crows, before making their way back to the village. An awkward silence had accompanied them on their journey back that the blackbird had tried to rid with questions and plans for the future, but the knight would not budge, and now he stood a white obelisk with bloody red swirls and patterns in front of the village that had started all of this. The potato man was once again accompanied by a large mob who seemed more scared than happy. It was the potato man who stepped forward and went to speak, but before he could utter one word the knight threw a sack at his feet. The sack was dripping wet. You uh, want me to open this? asked the potato man. The knight said nothing. But the bird called in response. The man gingerly peeked inside before dropping the sack and taking a step back. The contents of the sack spilled forth as it hit the ground. Dozens of elf ears scattered themselves in front of the mob to gasps, but to the knight's surprise, no cheers. Proof, called the black bird. Leave, said the potato man. Leave ear and never come back, monster. The knight looked to the bird and back to the man. White tentacles lay wrapped around themselves in between the cracks and divots in his armour, now more exposed than ever. He went to speak, but the bird intervened. You gave us a job, human. You owe this knight a reward and your praise from saving you all from the elf menace. The crowd was teetering on the brink, edging this way and that, but a child couldn't take it at the tension anymore and screamed, Monster! They threw a rock, striking the knight's shoulder. More took up the call, and the potato man struggled to shout over them. We deal with knights and good honest folk, not this ear demon, a monster sent to us when we were too weak to refuse its deals. More rocks joined the hail, and the knight went for his sword, before realising it was not there. He tried to shield himself, but dozens of rocks, clumps of mud, and handfuls of food beat against his armour like a thousand tiny drummers. A particularly jagged rock sliced some white flesh that was poking out for a gap in the armour and the knight roared in pain. The black bird attempted to take flight but within two flaps of its wings caught a rotten apple to the face and crumpled to the ground. The sound of a wailing wind beat like thunder inside the knight's helm and he started to move forward through the hail, one step at a time. He passed the blackbird before realising it was bloodied and struggling to stand as more tiny missiles hammered it into the ground. He took one last look at the mob before letting out a guttural scream that quietened the storm and all else around save for the whimpering of the now stunned mob. He quickly scooped up his friend and clambered back down at the road and away from the mob, which soon regained their confidence and resumed throwing whatever they could. Down the path he had come and into the wilderness he ran, using his body as a shield to protect his weakened friend, who could not protect himself. The crowd followed and his back took hit after hit, armour slowly chipping away as loose plates and scraps fell little by little, like frozen tears, making him more and more exposed and he stumbled to his knees with a monumental thud. Yet still he protected the bird. He always would, no matter how many came. He hugged the injured bird tight. He had lost his weapons, his chance of grand songs of heroics, and his own path, but he would not lose his friend. 
He knew he needed no finely crafted suit or weapon. He was the shield, and he was the weapon. He would do what he must. The end. Hey guys, so that was White Ink. Hope you guys enjoyed listening to that. This was a story I wrote myself, and uh, it is going to be part of a larger collection of short stories. So there's a company called uh, Pindrop Productions who are releasing a book which is out right now uh, called Raccoons Are Hard to Come By. And this is a short story inside that book. So just for transparency's sake, it's not a collection of short stories I am writing. It's a load of different authors and a really cool company who got in touch with me because I know uh, a few of the guys who work there. And they wanted me to write a book, a uh, short story for them, which I did. So not all the stories in there are going to be fantasy or in the same style as this. There's a huge mix. We have murder mysteries. There's uh, real kind of dark stories, heartwarming stories. Obviously, we also have kind of like the fantastical elements as well of this type of story all mixed into one. So if you guys do want to pick that up, the book is out now. It's called Raccoons Are Hard to Come By. I'll leave a link to the Amazon um link down below in the description but hope you guys enjoyed if you want to see more of this type of stuff on my channel alongside the gaming stuff where i share my own written work in the form of an audiobook and the like feel free to let me know down below in the comments and also you know, give the video a big old thumbs up and subscribe it's always a good indicator that people enjoy what they see if you do want to support the channel in any other way and kind of keep us afloat and all good then uh, feel free to look in the description below where there'll be links to our patreon where you can support me on there and yeah all that kind of good standard stuff so until next time guys peace peace and as always stay awesome